Well, people asked me when I first started to um, paint and draw, and I, I just always have. I did so as a child. And it seems to me just, a, just an entirely natural thing to do. I realise that most people don't do this stuff, and it's amazing if you're an artist, what, what, you know, what is it that drives you? What is it that... There, there is an, ele an, an element in me that is um, uh, compulsive. That I, you know, I feel as though I, if I haven't done my art, <laughs> I haven't fulfilled myself in some way. I'm asked about my connection with the sea, and I suppose it is only natural that um, I would paint the sea. I grew up by the sea. I grew up on the north coast of Cornwall, um, on the beaches and cliffs. That, that was my playground. And um, I also spent seven years fishing during the 1970s. So the sea as subject matter um, almost seems to me to be um, you know, of course, of course I paint the sea. Um, it is not the only thing I painted, but... Um, and as far as choice of subject matter goes, I think that is, is also something which comes from within. I don't, I don't think I can... I'm not an illustrator. I can't just go out and make... You know, perhaps if I was commissioned to paint something, I might go and do it. But on the whole, the work which comes naturally to me uh, um, are things which... Things, just things which catch my eye. Uh, in this exhibition, there are um, different series of work. Um, there are drawings which I've done uh, when I've been teaching. When I taught at Summerhill School, it became a part of my method of teaching that I'd ask people to sit and pose for me, and then other pupils would come along and, um, and draw as well. Um, there are other um, series of drawings which, uh, for a long while, I was drawing still lives of vegetables and fruit on the, uh, on the kitchen table. Um, and in some ways I look back now and think, well, I was in, in the position of having to provide um, the food for the family. And um, perhaps that was, you know, that had some effect on the subject matter I chose. Um, and obviously the fish, which I later on drew, um, were, was related to my um, fishing experience. Um, but um, I guess that, that, that seven years at sea would have given me a feel for light and weather and mood and I guess that sort of eye for weather, that eye for um, you know, the, the subtle change in weather and mood is a part of those, those paintings. Um, and I think that, that that is certainly, I'm very conscious, I think my, my, um, the sensitivity of my eye is, is attuned, to, has become attuned to things like that. Um, if I think of other, other series of work, um, our children, um, we have five children, and they've, they all learned to play instruments. Um, three of them went to Cheatham School of Music um, and have, will go on or are going on to becoming um, professional musicians. But as a result of that, um, you know, when I visited Cheatham's and when I, we've been to concerts and so forth, I've made um, drawings and paintings um, of those events, of master classes and things like that. Um, and also just individual portraits of my children playing. And so that has been, um, been another, another source of subject, subject for me. Um, and I think also uh, landscape, in particular the Cornish landscape, um, and things like hawthorn trees and blackthorn trees um, in, in winter. They, initially they were entirely in winter, and more lately they become uh, trees in blossom. Um, but those, again, I've, I, it's, it's, what catches your eye in the landscape, I guess? The work started with drawings, very dark drawings, of, uh, which were to do with the sea and to do with beaches. And yet, you know, when we come to, in the, to the end of the show, um, you know, I'm still doing that. And um, I, they are still the same sort of concerns. The, the exhibition was called Dark to Light because for many, many years I worked um, just in black and white. Um, and so more, I, more colour has come into my work, and it, it becomes about colour and tone. Um, so I think in that sense it's developed. Um, I'm not sure if... It, I suppose one can work on a larger scale, perhaps more confidently. Um, I, if, if I, 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 I just wonder if I had the opportunities in those days. Um, what would what would have come? You know, whether I would have worked on um, a larger scale, I don't know. Um, 
It's still, but it's still the same chap. You know, it's still the same bloke who's, who's doing this stuff. Um, I think I, I am interested in that aspect, actually, that um, you know, when I hung the show, I thought, my God, you know, this really is Robert Jones. This really is me, just the colours, even, even the colours of the drawings and the frames and the choice of presentation, um, uh, along with maybe some of those uh, wooden um, blocks and toys and things. Um, I did get a real sense of my own personality, and um, that was very interesting. One of the things now I think that art is about, it is to do with finding yourself. In, and well, when I was a student, we, people used to talk about finding yourself. And I don't suppose I really understood what was meant then, but I think I do now. I think that it is to do with, you know, to, that is what art is about. It is about finding yourself constantly, continually. It is still about that, finding your own way of doing it. I think I'm still, still learning how to do it. I think when, if, if you're any good as an artist, that's what you do. It, it, it's always a, a matter of, you know, each time you try to do it, each, I mean, I sometimes think I can't do this anymore. I just don't know how to do it. And sometimes, it, sometimes the best work comes out of a sense of frustration, out of, the, out of a sense of what you're doing is absolutely hopeless, <laughs> and you have to radically change it. Following on with what I was saying about sort of being frustrated with work and so forth, and it, pushing it to a different level, I think. That if the paintings really are any good, they do themselves. I'm just there to guide them along. Um, the best paintings, I think, have that, that element of forgetting yourself in them altogether. And it's almost once there are a few marks there, or once you have something and you, the, the, the desire to... It is often not a matter of making things good. It is often a matter of getting rid of what is annoying and what, what is frustrating in the painting. And, and in a way, it has, it, it has an, 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 I can't even say it. Um, it, it, it has its own life, which you go, um, as an artist, you just sort of go along with the life of the painting. Um, I particularly like the ones I've done very, very quickly. Um, I, although they're not in this exhibition, there are paintings where I've been at sea uh, in a fishing boat and painted people working. And... I cannot recall doing them, and I don't think I was conscious of doing them because I was conscious of just keeping my balance and making sure that the box of paints didn't slide across the deck and so forth. Um, so, and also, I think um, some of the musicians I painted, they're obviously moving around all the time. They, they haven't, I haven't asked them to stay still for me. They've, they've uh, been there just doing their master class or playing their, um, playing their instrument. Um, and I've had to make paintings very, very quickly and almost, you, you, you completely forget yourself. There is no, you're completely involved in what you're doing and uh, I think that's a great thing. Several paintings in this show are um, of a similar theme and that is the, um, the land from, seen from the sea. Um, and they obviously relate to my um, being at sea experience off the coast of uh, Cornwall, looking back to um, perhaps Newlyn or Mousel, uh, or uh, going around, after you've gone around the Lizard, there's um, St. Kevin uh, Church in the distance. Uh, but there are little bits of just, um, as the painting has evolved, they become, so, you know, I haven't necessarily planned what they've got, got to be. They've um, uh, just sort of evolved into something and a memory has come back to me and that is the, the painting has formed itself in that way. Um, there's one painting here which um, I had the feeling that it wasn't uh, Cornwall at all, but we were, um, uh, I spent all the time sailing in the Mediterranean and um, the Aegean rather, uh, and passing various Greek islands. Uh, and there was a little touch of that. So, so sometimes ideas become combined in, um, in, uh, in paintings and they change and, uh, as the paintings change. An interesting... Um, uh, remark someone once made, um, a retired uh, a, a captain of a liner said to me once, um, Robert, your paintings remind me so much of my period at sea, uh, my life at sea. He said, of uh, being at sea and looking at the land and thinking how wonderful and inviting it was, or of being on the land and looking at the sea and seeing ships go by and uh, thinking how inviting it was. He said, and it all looked absolutely wonderful. He said, but I can tell you it was, rare, <laughs> it was rarely true when you got there. So, um, I think that's. I think the idea of evoking um, th that paintings might evoke feelings and um, 
you know, to, see, to see the land from the sea, to see a distant land uh, carries with it another sort of a little meaning with it and um, some sort of hope and um, expectation perhaps. The beach paintings, um, of which I think there are, quite, there are quite a number of beach paintings here, and they obviously have to do with my childhood and my you know, hours of wandering along beaches and cliffs and so forth. When I was at primary school, that was a particularly dreadful place. I mean, it was a place where the, um, the teachers beat the children. And I still have strong memories and fears, really, of the things that I experienced and saw there. And a part of my way of coping with that was getting ill and staying away from school. And I can remember being at home and making paintings even of the, uh, of the sea at that time. And it is the Atlantic, um, the Atlantic shore. And I've also painted the Atlantic on the other side. I've been to uh, Nantucket, where the tale of Moby Dick started. Um, and it was a great whaling, whaling port. Um, but um, to paint the Atlantic from the other side of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the ocean, to paint the Atlantic from the other side um, was... Um, it was interesting. It's, you know, it's the same, only different, I guess. And I think maybe it has meanings which are you know, beyond, beyond words and beyond my ability to explain them. And I probably quite rightly so, because that's what paintings do. It just seems to me a natural thing to paint, just as other subjects we associate with other artists. Um, I haven't consciously said, oh, you know, I made a decision. I want to paint the sea, it just so somehow occurs naturally. I suppose it's alive, it's moving. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not much for still water. Um, you know, even, even, even if it's sort of the, the, some of the still, some of the less um, active seas, you know, are, have, have got light on the water and are, are where the, uh, the sun is glinting and dancing on the water. Whatever it is, it's, this is to do with some sort of inner energy and some, some sort of life force running through me. And, which I put into the paintings. The art critic in our area, Frank Rumond, made a very perceptive um, and rather nice remark about some work which I did many years ago. I had an exhibition in Newland Art Gallery and he described the still life paintings as the most unstill still lives he had ever seen. And I thought that was a really good remark. And I was, but I know exactly what he meant by that because it was about energy. Um, and not just about turnips and carrots and <laughs> those things that appeared in the painting. For, for many years, for probably about 15 years, the wife and I used to go to um, St Agnes, uh, particularly on the Silly Isles. And um, I made paint a great many paintings of the rocks there. And oh, just off the, off, the, um, off the coast of St Agnes, there's a series of rocks called the Western Rocks, which have been a, um, a great source of uh, imagery in my paintings. Um, and there's a lot of small paintings in this show which are just to do with the rocks around, around uh, particularly around St Agnes, but they're, they're, they might be considered just some rocks around Cornwall in general. I think they're, they're not so much particular places any longer. They often become um, just general paintings of sea and rocks. Uh, again, you know, going back to that childhood experience, I think it's, um, you know, in this show, it's given me a chance to to think about, uh, you know, you, you, in a retrospective show, you're bound to think about, you know, who you are and where you came from and what your concerns are as an artist and um, some of those recurring things, I guess, are you know, close to close to the source, I guess. Um, there's also another um, set of work. There are a few paintings which relate back to that fishing experience of uh, uh, fishing boats off the coast. Um, in the summer, we used to work, um, you know, working 450 crab boats uh, off the north coast of Cornwall, catching lobsters and crabs. And uh, that, was, that was no mean feat. Um, there were lots of hours involved in doing that. And, um, uh, you know, it took, uh, if it, <laughs> to be a successful fisherman, you, 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 you don't have to be a, a fool to do that. You know, that really does take some doing. Um, and I've got great respect for, for the, the, 
the guys um, who I knew at that time. Um, but uh, we used to be off fishing in, uh, in the winter. We used to go around the corner. We used to go around to um, Mounts Bay or Falmouth Bay. And there you could, you could sail right across the whole bay sometimes with your echo sounder on, which would give you a picture of the um, top to the bottom of the sea. And it would be black. It would be black with fish right from one side to the other. Four or five miles you could go and have a continual fish. And there would be, at the most, I've seen fleets of, uh, a fleet of about 400 Cornish fishing boats there working, handlining um, from Accra. Um, and as you drifted down through, the, uh, through the, uh, the fleet of boats and you come to the edge of the, uh, edge of the shoal, then you would steam back up and go to the other, edge, uh, other end and just start all over again. And we would be catching perhaps, um, on a good day, you'd be over 400, uh, over 100 stone a man. We, we, we'd be four-handed, so we'd have 400 stone. Um, but um, that, was, that really was a remarkable sight. And also you'd see then, uh, at, at times, you'd see gannets diving on these, uh, on the shores of Macro. And there's a painting, there are a couple of paintings in this show which are to do with the gannets diving and to do with the shoals, the, the fishing uh, fleet working. So again, you know, those, those paintings are based in, in, in my memory. And um, I guess having written on Wallace, um, who, uh, who said he painted what, um, what used to be and uh, what um, will be seen no more. Um, I think in so, there, there is an echo of that in my work, not, not consciously, but uh, I think that uh, there are, there are similar, similar things there. But talking about Alfred Wallace, um, I became aware of Alfred Wallace when I was a student, and I remember going to an exhibition in the, uh, the Penwith Gallery in St Ives. I think it had come from the Tate, um, and it was a really smashing, uh, comprehensive exhibition. Um, and after that, I read a book by uh, Edwin Mullins on his, his first book on uh, Wallace. Um, and it was like, it, it was and still is a wonderful book, um, but there was something which bothered me in it. Um, and that was the, uh, that he reported or recorded that um, a man called Albert Rowe had uh, said, made a statement, now grandfather told me that Alfred never went to see in his life. Uh, he only thought he did because he wasn't right in the head. Now, I think probably even in, the, in those early days, I realised that, 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 that there was a truth in Wallace's work um, which would not have been there had he not been to sea. And certainly after my experience of being fishing, of being at sea, I realised exactly the, the features in those paintings were, um, would never have been there had he not known, um, known the shore from the sea, and uh, there are various things about fishing boats and schooners and so forth, which uh, it was absolutely apparent to me that this, he was telling the truth, that he had been to sea. And so um, I started to write about him, and I started to point out the things which I, as an artist and an ex-fisherman, was, was able to see in his paintings. So I was explaining the truth of the work. Um, and this went on, and it took five years, in fact, to do this book. Um, and I was able eventually uh, to find him on ship's list, on a ship's list which took him uh, not long after he was married um, in Penzance. Uh, he went on a schooner from um, Penzance to Cadiz, <coughs> where they would have probably taken salt across to Newfoundland, to St. John's, where they loaded salt cod, and then they, uh, then they returned to, uh, to Cornwall. Both trips took three months, which even in those days was a long time. And um, there is one tale of, uh, one story which um, uh, I'd heard where um, it was reported that uh, some of the cargo had to be jettisoned because of a gale. Um, and those were hard days and uh, that experience was you know, a very real and um, tough experience. But it was one which um, Wallace put into his paintings. You know, he, that, that was what he wanted to tell us. He was desperate to tell well, desperate. He, that, that was what... Wallace started painting at 70, uh, and he painted his memories. And if we, in that book, I hope I have, um, I hope I have brought the evidence um, of his, the truth of his uh, vision, of his real experience of being at sea. Uh, I hope I brought that to, um, to people's attention. 
Um, I suppose I felt a bit lonely after I'd done Wallace. That was sort of five years of you know, sort of doing this part time, and uh, I, I'd been uh, for a long time. I'd admired the work of Ruben Chapel, uh, who was the ship portrait painter, known as a pierhead painter, because uh, he painted paintings of ships for the captains and the crew of ships when they came into port. And he came first of all from Ghoul in Yorkshire, and then he moved to Cornwall because of his health. He, moved, he was advised to move to Cornwall. Uh, and he lived in Parr. And in both places, he painted the ships which came and went from the port. Um, and sold them, not to art collectors. I mean, his work never appeared in art galleries. Uh, they were sold to the, the people whose lives were intimately um, connected with the, with the, um, the ships. Um, I mean, they are real, they're really absolutely lovely paintings, and I think they are underrated um, for what they are, because they are not only are they beautiful things to look at, but they're obviously historic records of things which will not be seen again, things which are gone forever. Um, and so that book is due out in a year's time, um, but I have done a considerable amount of work on it already. It's going to be a very large book, um, and has led me to research not only the history of the ships, and, uh, but also the trades that they were involved with. Um, but um, I, I, on, on my writing, I must say that um, I suppose I feel that the painting was given to me. That's, that was a gift which, um, you know, I just feel is just a complete part of me and, uh, and that comes naturally to me. Not, not, not that I don't struggle with the paintings and try to make them better, but I feel that it is a part of me. My education was appalling. My primary education was, um, it, was it, it was terrifying. The, the, the beatings and the um, uh, canings that went on in that school were... were was absolutely awful, and I, I must say, I, do, I don't think I read a book. In fact, I don't think I did. I know damn well I didn't read a book until I was I left secondary school um, until I was about sixteen, and I've spent most of my life believing that I was pretty well, not not believing, but being pretty hopeless at expressing myself um, in written form, uh, and it is only in the last part of my life that. I have, um, I felt the need to write that book. I felt driven to write the book on Wallace um, because I felt, I suppose I felt a certain injustice was being done to him. Um, and, but that has made me write and, it, and I suppose my writing has improved and uh, I have um, developed that. But it's, um, I've had to work at that. <laughs> I don't like talking about what, um, what is about to happen because very often it doesn't work out like that. <laughs> you jinx it. Um, I do have uh, several opportunities arising on the other side of the Atlantic, which to me seem like great fun. And so um, I would very much like to do that. Um, I have visited California a couple of times and I, um, I painted in the Mojave Desert and that was something else. Um, uh, to, to sit in, a, in, you know, what seemed like utter silence um, in this... It, 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 it's, uh, to, to explain the feeling of being in a desert um, is very difficult because it's as though there's nothing going on, as though everything is still, and yet it seems as though everything is going on, as though, as though there's something buzzing in the background somehow, the whole thing is uh, alive. And so I, I would like to, I, 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 I would like to sort of revisit that experience. I'd like to visit sort of those lonely, still sort of places, and um, also extraordinary light, um, things absolutely pulsating and vibrating with light. Somehow, I think that's that was a part of it. I've also been invited back to Nantucket to do a show over there, and I would like to develop more of the work that I've done there. I'll show you in a minute a painting I did, um, which I rather liked. I sat on the, sat on the shore um, on, uh, near Great Point on Nantucket. And it was, you see, the, the Nantucket is known as the Grey Lady because it is a, a, a place where they get a lot of fog. 
And so when we look out to sea, um, the, sea the, the horizon is no longer there. The thing is coated in mist and uh, a, a real atmosphere. And people often ask me, um, you know, do I have a sort of a, a pattern to my working or um, you know, a routine or something? And I, I've got to say I'm completely without any routine or pattern. I just work. Um, I suppose it's not just a matter of when the work, when the mood takes me. I mean, I do know that there are exhibitions for which paintings must be made for, but um, my work is it works. You know, there are peaks and troughs. There are times when it goes easily, and sometimes um, there are times when I can't work and just have to leave it alone. And, the, and I, I don't really even plan the paintings. I don't even plan what I'm going to do in a day. I'll just pick up something and just start on this and um, then work on the next one. Very often I work on, um, I don't do one painting from start to finish. The studio paintings are generally done over quite a long period of time where I'll do a bit uh, each day and then a bit more tomorrow and a bit so forth um, until they resolve themselves. Um, the paintings, obviously the on-the-spot paintings, um, I do in just in one hit and I enjoy those as well. And I suppose they, they sort of inform the studio paintings. Um, but I, I really have got no, um, you know, it might occur to me that I'm sort of doing some sort of too many small paintings, so I start doing bit, some bigger ones, and then you get involved doing those and work on them for a while, and then you just lose interest in them, put them aside and start some other stuff. But it's... Um, um, I just sort of I follow my nose or something, you know. I, th I think perhaps we could have had a subtitle to this exhibition and it would be that which catches my eye because that is what I paint. Um, and what, you know, what it is that catches my eye or I suppose what it is that catches any artist's eye, uh, you know, each person would be different. And um, you know, what it is that springs to my mind when I'm painting, I, don't, I just, uh, it's, it's a mystery. Um, but it's, I, I certainly like, um, you know, in the on-the-spot on paintings, you know, it is that element that you see something and you feel as though you, I must sit down and make a painting of that. Um, and, uh, you know, that element, I suppose, of spon there is an element of spontaneity in that. Um, but, also the, but it also happens in the studio. You know, the, what, what is it that all of a sudden crop comes into my head? Oh, I'll make an image of this. I'll make, make something of that. And once you've done one of them, you think, oh, and I'll, perhaps I'll do another, and perhaps it becomes a series. Um, so it goes a bit, you know, which way does the wind blow?